While the people in Philadelphia and Kansas City get all the fun and get to look forward to the Super Bowl, around here we're all looking forward to the NFL draft. There is no such thing as too soon for this, my friends. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. It's Senior Bowl week for those fans of the 30 teams that aren't participating in the main event. And that's not so bad. It's... uh. It's become an interesting, increasingly interesting event in recent years. It's in Mobile, Alabama. The game itself is Saturday, but just as much, if not more, attention is paid to the practices and the workouts in advance of that. For our website, Chris Halleck, our Steelers beat writer, is down in Mobile. He'll be filing reports all week. I'm looking forward to them as much as I'm sure... Our football-loving readers will be looking forward to them. That's just the nature of this thing. However, however, let's not pretend, any of us, that we don't enter something as simple even as reading an article about the draft without a preconceived notion of what we want to see, what we hope the Steelers do. So when I'm reading... Chris's first piece for Mobile. I, I, I'm not going to lie here. I went right through, like ripped through the first eight, nine paragraphs because all I wanted to find was the first slash best offensive lineman he'd describe. And it turned out to be someone from North Dakota State whose name I've already forgotten. Uh, looks like he might be the 42nd at least projected overall pick in the draft. Uh, That was according to Pro Football Focus. So then I kind of lost interest. I I eventually got around to reading it. I mean, he's on our staff. Chris says, I'm going to read his work. But in the moment, all I wanted was the offensive lineman. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't even realize that fully until that moment. Heck, I'd even been saying here on this show that, you know, you got to be open minded and you got to, you know, not worry about the positions. Go ahead and address your various shortcomings in free agency and set yourself up in the draft to just get the best available players. And I was saying all those right things. And then I still did that. I grabbed the Cliffs notes and went right for the offensive lineman. Well, guess what? I'm still wrong to do that, and the Steelers would be too. What can you expect at Point Park University in downtown Pittsburgh? Respect, rigor, relevance. That's the Point Park pledge. You'll be treated with respect while being challenged and supported academically to graduate with career-ready, relevant skills. Visit pointpark.edu to learn more. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm talking about the draft, and I mentioned a mock, and I didn't go right to the point and tell you who it was that PFF had the Steelers drafting, which is the only thing you'd be interested in, right? So I'll just go ahead and do that. It's, wait, it's an offensive tackle. It's Darnell Wright from Tennessee. How about that? Now, he was a right tackle for the Vols, and you would think that right tackle is not nearly the need that you'd have at left tackle from the Pittsburgh perspective, but there's never been a right tackle in college who's been incapable of getting moved to the other side or vice versa. I'm sorry. I know you hear it on occasion, but that doesn't mean it's true. Anyone, anyone can play any side. It's just a matter of how much training, how much experience, and then from there, how much confidence they've built up on a certain side of the offensive line. And in this same mock, there were three other offensive linemen taken ahead of where the Steelers chose, which I also found interesting considering that a lot of the times when I do mention my preference to have the O-line be the, the choice that the Steelers make, 
I hear back, ah, you know, it's it's not a great class for those guys. It's not whatever. Hey, it doesn't matter what's a great class. All that matters is who's there at 17, you know? And there's been great offensive line classes in recent years. And what you mean when you say that is enough to fill the top 10. Well, that's immaterial here. And in the Steelers' case, they'd have to trade up. I don't know that you're going to see them trade up again for a long time after Devin Bush. So, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't be moving up. Don't be giving up a a lower pick of any kind to go sliding north. Wait to see what falls and then go after the best player with one exception, with one positional exception. That's quarterback. I mean, I could throw a running back in too, but that's just way too obvious to even insult you with. That's it. That's it. Get the best player, the best football player. Now, a week before this draft, when Mike Tomlin and Omar Khan have their meeting with those of us in the media, it used to be obviously Tomlin and Kevin Colbert, all you're going to hear is how they're pursuing the best player, how they have no interest in anything else. They're not operating with any kind of depth chart. They're not operating off of any sort of uh, positional needs. And then, however, if you look back at recent history, they've said this only to go right after a very, very glaringly obvious positional need. The last two drafts being the chief examples. Well, I hope this time they mean it. Because you know what? Even if someone were to swoop in and take Darnell Wright, the kid from Tennessee, off their hands the last second, presuming that Wright is the guy that they'd want, you know who PFF's next guy is on the mock? Yeah, a defensive tackle named Kalijah Cansey, ACC Defensive Player of the Year out of the University of Pittsburgh. With that next door familiarity, when we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Subject matter on the offensive line it comes from Slim. He says, Hey DK, do you think Chooks of Horfor is playing up to that big contract he received last year? Also, we still need more beef in the trenches. <laughs> no one would dispute you on that one, Slim. As for Chooks, uh, for anyone who doesn't know this, his salary and his cap hit for 2023 is going up to 13 million next year. I understand that offensive tackles, even right tackles, are expensive. I understand why. I talk about the offensive line probably as much as anybody anywhere. However, however, if you're going to be a $13 million tackle, you need to be in the Pro Bowl. You need to be making a real impact. You need to be a bastion of consistency. Chooks is not any of those three things. Take this please from someone who has a, a wonderful, at least from my own perspective, working relationship with Chooks. I think he's a terrific guy. I also think he is a freak of nature uh, in terms of his physical abilities. He's gigantic. He's strong, uh, unbelievably strong, according to his teammates. And He knows and understands the position, and he is richly, fiercely competitive. So what's my problem? Well, it's consistency more than anything else. If you watch tape of his final game, the Steelers' final game, obviously, against the Browns, 
you'll see hmm one out of every six snaps you really won't like something you really won't like it and it doesn't require you know the brain of mike munchak to see it you'll just go oh geez no man no what are you doing there and that's been a big 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 problem for him the principal problem with him since his arrival. Everyone's known all along what he can do, and everyone sees on occasion the the positives to what he can do, the benefits to it. He had one play, uh, this was in the second to last game, the one down in Baltimore. He just took a guy by with one arm and just flung him like something out of a cartoon to get out of his path and looked like just to amuse himself. I asked him about it after the game and he was like, yeah, you see that? Ha 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 ha. And he's turning to James Daniels and laughing because he's capable of these things. However, sometimes when you're an athlete, this applies to any sport who can do things that others can't, you might not focus as much on the mental component to the game, meaning what are the little ins and outs, the little tricks of the trade that you can learn to make yourself, well, here's that word again, consistent. Look, Chooks isn't going anywhere, okay? They're not about to cut him. Uh, they're not going to be looking to save that $13 million when you have to go out and pay that much to get a good right tackle anyway, or you know something in that neighborhood. So nothing's going to happen. I mean, it, you know, you could be looking at some kind of restructuring or something, but that's not something that would reflect on the athlete. He's still going to collect all of his money and he's still going to, you know, get his pension and everything else. But I do think it's something worth keeping an eye on. You don't just want, you need for that player to perform to his cap hit when it's that high. He's been okay but he can be better. And if your main point in asking this was, why do we constantly just talk about the left side as opposed to the right? It's not as if the right is solved. Yeah, I'm completely with you on that one. But the left is very uncertain because you don't know what Dan Moore can do uh, because he lacks more than just the consistency. Look, just get a tackle. You know what I mean? Get a tackle and move it wherever it is that you want. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. 